Robert here with Fiddleback Forge for another fantastic Fiddleback Friday. You know what that means. I've got amazing, amazing knives to show you. 13 total in fact. And here they are in a super sweet little teaser reel. All right, as always, really, really killer knives. You can see this one from Amy with the Royal Lantern Enterprises. Ooh, that thing is amazing. Obviously, she can rock it out in different styles, and they always come with sheaths with her. Got a Mulgy Knife Company in the house, WA Searles as well. Got Fiddleback Forge sprinkled in here, like that one right there, along with these two bad boys right there. Oh, yeah, that Hunter right there. You don't see those very often. Russell Reese, Kohata Knife Company, rocking those right there. Stunning bushcraft models. Warthog from Fiddleback Forge. And of course, Joey Berry with a cool new model right there that you see with that super cool vintage handle material and a Fiddleback Forge solo rounding it out. It is a awesome Fiddleback Friday. Hope you guys stick around for the in hand where I'll show you what all these look like in hand. Of course. A little bit of a new background I got rolling back here. This is actually going to be the Fiddleback Outpost studio if it ever gets done. But we're in the Fiddleback Outpost office. That little booth right back there and all that crazy conglomeration right there of lights and sound panels and all that is so that I can bring you the in-hand portion of this video which is coming up where I'll show you what all the knives look like in these hands right here. And uh, you may be wondering though, if you're new around here, how do I get one of these amazing knives? Well, we make it super duper simple. You go to fiddlebackforge.com slash Friday at exactly 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is when they post. You wanna be there a little bit early, ready to hit refresh on the screen because we've got some pretty hot models as you saw in that preview. And they're gonna go super duper quick. A lot of them will go in the first minute or two. So make sure you are prepared to be Johnny on the spot, if you know what I'm saying, because it's not the first person who puts it in their cart and wants to sit around and lollygag and decide if they want it. No, no, no. It's the first person who finishes the checkout 100% completely and knows they want that bad boy. That's who gets that amazing knife to show up in their mailbox next week. And uh, just to mention a change that we have uh, in the meantime, we are only shipping USPS priority mail at the moment. Uh, so be prepared for that as well when you're entering in the checkout, uh, that that will be the only option we are shipping for at the moment. So let's go ahead and get to the in-hand portion that I filmed in that little, little booth back there for you. So appreciate it guys. And uh, here's the knives in hand. Enjoy. <laughs> I've got to start off this Fiddleback Friday with this absolutely stunning example of cutting edge technology. See what I did there? See what I did? Cutting edge technology. Have you ever seen a handle material more beautiful and have more depth than that right there? No. I'll go ahead and answer it for you. No. No, you haven't. Copper wave resin on the bolsters. With that blue pinstripe wrap, got the black liners all the way throughout, got the black G10 on the bolster, the white wrap of the pinstripe on that, tapered tang on the Scoter model, which is already like one of the coolest little EDC knives ever because it's a small knife, very functional, but you can still get a full four finger grip even if you've got large hands like me. Pinky just wraps right up on there. That hump right there gives you a ton of control. Great indexing, beautiful swedge on that, beautiful hammer texture. Can you ask for anything more? Eighth inch, 8670, two and three quarters on the blade. So if you live in one of those uh, communist leaning states that don't like blades over three inches, this one's gonna be safe for you. And uh, it's hard for this to be intimidating if you take it out to use it because it's just so freaking beautiful and of course as always with amy's knives it also comes with a great belt sheath as well with matching thread amy does it up man she, she's serious she does this thing right way and i've got another one by her too and here is amy's other knife obviously going to the opposite end of the spectrum on the size because uh, this bad boy right here is about nine and three eighths inch overall four and three eighths inch on the blade. So a little over a four inch blade. Very, very camp friendly shape right there. Very beefy blades, gonna be good for uh, light chopping as well as batoning 
as well. So this is the musk ox model from Warlander Enterprises and beautiful ironwood. And don't adjust your screen. Those are not white pins. Those are Tiffany blue G10 and matching pinstripes on those natural liners. Absolutely gorgeous knife. This one's 532 A2 steel. Uh, beautiful spalting on that A2. Absolutely stunning. Skeletonized full tang. This one's weighted really well for such a large knife. It doesn't feel super heavy. Uh, balance point is just right there behind that first set of pins, which makes it feel and act a lot lighter than what it is. Uh, it just feels really great in hand. That ironwood's nice and solid, uh, but it's not too forward heavy where it feels like it's coming out of your hand. Uh, but it's still forward enough that it's going to be good at chopping, especially if you choke back on that. Of course, if you do, use that lanyard tube. Put your lanyard around your wrist if you're doing any kind of light chopping. Uh, just to give yourself a little bit of a safety factor there as well. But this one also comes with a sheath, of course, because it's Amy. And of course, you know that it not only has a beautiful texture, but it matches the wood on the handle and it also matches the thread with the pinstripe color. I'm telling you, anything from Warland Enterprises, top notch stuff. Look at the color of that leather. Absolutely beautifully finished. Amy of Warland Enterprises, knocking it out of the park as usual. Next up, I'm going to show you the new one from Lee Dykes. This is Okmogi Knife Company, and this is the Bullard XL. Now, you may have seen the Bullard XL that we had last week, but this is the newer handle design. So Lee redesigned the handle, uh, made it a lot more full, added a little bit of length to it as well. So this one is 8.5 inches overall with a 4-inch blade. Uh, this one in particular, 80 CRV2, which is a super crazy tough steel, and 8th inch skeletonized full tang and that beautiful wood right there on that new handle shape is awesome marble wood is a favorite of mine for sure and it's definitely got that two-tone kind of dual personality in the grain really really nice stuff natural liners red pinstripes finish it off and it is comfortable it's a really full handle it's going to eliminate hot spots for you really well fits really nicely in hand Balance wise, it's right there, right in front of that second set of pins right there. So it's got a little bit of handle bias, which makes it feel super secure in hand, like it's just not going anywhere. Uh, it keeps all the weight where your strength is as well. So there's advantages to that, but that is the Okmogi Knife Company Bullard XL right there. Really nice knife from Lee this week. All right, next up, this is the amazing Kohoto Knife Company, Drop Point Rogue. If you've watched any of these videos, you know I'm a huge fan of not only Russell's work with Kohoto Knife Company, but the Drop Point Rogue in particular has the same handle shape as the Nomad, which I own one of, and I'm a big, big fan of that handle shape. I think it's great. It's a very full handle shape, as many of the Kohotas are, uh, so it gives you a lot of protection against hot spots if you're using these knives for long periods of time. These are definitely meant to be users, although I know this one looks like a safe queen. It is meant to be taken out in the woods and used and used thoroughly. And uh, to that point, 52100 steel on this bad boy, a high strength carbon steel, is going to do the job super duper well. Eighth inch on that, so not too thick, not too thin, just right. Goldilocks would approve. Taper Tang, of course, Russell Knox and I of the park all the time with those. But that Box Elder right there, that smoky Box Elder is stunning. It's absolutely gorgeous. But, of course, it's all about the usability. But, hey, just because it's usable doesn't mean it can't be gorgeous, right? There you go. There's your answer right there. Natural liners, white pinstripes, and feels good for days. I really like... Russell's designs on the bushcraft stuff, it's really a niche that he's super strong in because uh, it's a niche that he participates heavily in. His indexing moves you a little bit forward to where when you're really gripping that blade, you can actually see the cutting point of that blade where all your power transfer is, is just on the other side of your finger. But it's really nice because you never feel like your finger is going to move up on that blade because it's just done really well and the handle shape is just that good. Now also, he does chamfer the edges right here on the drop point rogues. So anywhere you put your finger on top of this blade to help transfer power or do the job, uh, it's going to be comfortable for you to do so. But for those of you that are purists out there that complain about not being able to strike a fire steel, he leaves the last 
part of the edge up here starting at about right there actually right there he leaves those at a 90 degree spine so you can very easily strike your ferro rod to start your fire so best of both worlds absolutely bushcraft pro is what i like to call russell's knives especially the drop point rogue really awesome but if this one's just too pretty for you or maybe you just don't like uh, wood for your handle material i have another one of these as well that i'm going to show you and here is that other drop point rogue in a really nice bone linen micarta on the handle absolutely gorgeous the color reminds me a lot of osage wood but you get all the benefits of running with a synthetic handle material uh, the durability, second to none, obviously. My card is a super duper tough material. Natural liners, blue pinstripes, love the color combination, of course. And uh, if I didn't mention it before, the Drop Point Rogue, 3 and 5 eighths inch on the blade, 8 and 3 eighths inch overall. This one is also 52100 steel uh, with a really nice spalted texture that you see right there as well. Skeletonized full tang on this one. So a little bit fuller on the handle, a little bit more handle bias, but not much. You're still looking at a balance point right there in front of that second set of pins right there. So it just gives a little bit more weight in the handle. It's not super dramatic, uh, but if you like it to feel a little more secure in hand, uh, as opposed to feeling a little bit more flippy, uh, that's going to be for you. Skeletonized full tang is the way to go. Drops the weight without messing with the weight distribution too much and moving it too far forward. So drop point rogue, bone linen, micarta. Whew, good stuff. Good stuff. All right, next up, Joey Berry with JB Knife Works with a really interesting new model right here. This is the Little Layman. You may be familiar with the Layman. I'm going to show you one of those as well and show you the comparison between the two. Um, now, both are roughly eight inches overall. This one's eight inches overall. The Layman, uh, the larger Layman, not the little layman, is eight and a quarter inch overall. So not a huge difference as far as length, but this one is noticeably slimmer. Uh, would make for a great fillet knife, would make for a great uh, hunting knife as well, skinning knife, uh, because it is very scalpel-like, especially this one being 116th, 8670 steel. 8670 is nice because it's one of those really tough steels, uh, holds an edge pretty well. Uh, and works really, really well in 16th because it doesn't warp like other steels do when they get that thin and it retains a ton of its strength. So if you're going to have a scalpel-like blade uh, like the little layman does right here for JB Knife Works, uh, you will want it to be in a steel like 8670 for sure. Uh, but I want to talk about this handle material because this is super duper rare stuff. This was actually uh, recovered from the Netherlands and it's Westinghouse micarta, which you've probably seen before, but this was a rod of Westinghouse micarta, which you don't normally see. And you can see it's almost got a grain pattern like when you cut a tree uh, in that rod right there. And you can see how the bark is around the outside edges. Really, really cool stuff and finished out absolutely beautiful. Obviously nice and thin there on the handle, but it's not super crazy thin feeling. Uh, because it does keep a lot of that rounded shape from that rod. Feels really good in hand. I think it's a really cool knife with an exceptional handle material. That stuff's super rare, super hard to get, and uh, really nice. So Westinghouse Micarta Rod. Very cool stuff. Joey always comes up with really great handle materials. He keeps an eye out for them. And obviously with his connection with Pops Knife Supply, helps out a lot. Sorry about the lint. Uh, got most of it. There you go. Little layman. Let me show you what the little layman looks like compared to the regular layman. All right. So this is the little layman on the bottom here. The regular layman on the top right here. You can see very close to the same size as far as length goes. Uh, but the layman is a much fuller handle uh, in that it's taller with a taller blade as well. So there's the differences. It it seems visually a lot more subtle than what it actually feels like in hand. See if I can turn these without dropping them or banging them into each other. Uh, it's a very subtle difference on camera, it looks like. Uh, but the difference in hand is, is quite a bit different. Let me go ahead and show you the layman. And this, of course, is the layman that we've been talking about. Super rare, uh, these days anyway, Opal G10 is very, very rare. They're running out of it. Um, so you're not going to see a whole lot of knives come back out with that. Joey's used quite a bit of it in the past. It's absolutely gorgeous. So there's good reason he's been using it. 
This one he's rocking natural liners and of course rocking some blue pinstripes on there. Taper tang on that as well. But the cool and special part about this particular layman right here is going to be the blade. Three and three quarter inches. Yeah, pretty standard. Eight and a quarter inches. We talked about that. Eighth inch thickness. Pretty standard as well. But this is 3V steel. CPM 3V is considered an absolute super steel. I don't think it's considered quite a stainless. But to say that you can beat the snot out of this and it holds an edge would not be an understatement. It is crazy tough on the steel. So if you have been looking for what I would call a stainless variant, very stain resistant. Uh, it's just, I can't remember the exact reason why it's not considered a true stainless. Uh, but I have yet to see one with any rust on it at all. And this is the same steel that uh, Fiddleback Forge used on their Mitech production camp knives that uh, I had never seen any damage on at all. So super tough steel, uh, very weather resistant. If you've been waiting on a knife with more weather resistance uh, in this size category, look no further than that right there. JB Knife Works, Layman, Opal G10, super rare, hollow pins. Hello. I know. I, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. All right. Before we get started with the Fiddleback Forge, we're going to go ahead and finish out the Fiddleback family. This is the W. Searles Inlander right here. Natural burlap, natural liners, three inch blade. You have seen this model before and I'm not going to talk about it a lot. Why? Because I'm punishing Alan. He only gave us one knife this week and there was two weeks this past month that, that we didn't get any knives and he deserves to be punished for that and you should let him know that you're not happy not seeing at least two knives a week on Fiddleback Friday. Go tell Alan. W.A. Searles. He makes a great knife. That's why we need more. Just so you know. Pick this one up. Great knife. Won't be sorry. EDC. All right. So enough using the marketing platform as a way to take a shot at Alan's laziness. We're going to use it for good. Lazen, good God. Can you look at this knife? It's absolutely stunning. I'm a little biased. I got to admit, I've always been a fan of the Hunter model, which is what this is. It's kind of like a uh, beefier version of the Bushfinger uh, for Fiddleback Forge. And uh, the thing I love about it is this vintage gray Ghost Micarta, which is super rare handle material. Why? Because it matches my Forerunner. So I don't even know why it's on Fiddleback Friday and not sitting in the glove compartment of my truck right now. But hey, here you go. It's up for your offering first. Now, if one of you doesn't take it, it's probably going to end up in that center console of that truck. So black bolsters, black liners, white pinstripes with the full wrap treatment, and that nice little white beauty mark right there for that pen. But that vintage gray ghost micarta, look at the layer on that. It almost like it creates a secondary liner. Absolutely gorgeous. Taper tang, of course. Man, he's done a great, great job on this knife. I love it. 530 seconds, 8670 on the steel. You can tell it's 8670 from the hammer texture. Uh, when you see that hammer texture on a Fiddleback Forge knife, it's always 8670. Four and a half inch blade, which is about half inch longer uh, than the Bushfinger. It also has a little bit taller blade than the Bushfinger. It also has a finger guard, which the Bushfinger doesn't have. And of course, the handle is a little bit larger as well. Nine and a quarter inch overall. Whew, Hunter. Vintage gray. Ghost Micarta. Whew, gorgeous. And speaking of super cool vintage handle materials, Vintage Linen Micarta, and look at that freaking bark right there, creating that almost secondary shadow liner layer. Gorgeous. Natural liners, thin white pinstripes on that bad boy. Absolutely gorgeous. Man, really love that knife. Got three mosaic pins on there, showing out with that Trinity pin out with a little bit of shine and a little bit of class. Got a single pin right there. Kind of stepping away from the four pins that you normally see up here, but absolutely stunning. Absolutely does not take away from that vintage micarta and lets it kind of lay out there very nicely, but accent color is perfect for it. Um, this one in particular is a thick 530 seconds, 8670 steel. Again, you can tell by the hammer texture right there on the Ricasso, but uh, super sweet taper tang on that. 
really matches it up super nice on the pommel right there as you can tell oh and by the way this model is the edc2 not to be confused with the edc1 which is a little more bulbous and round back here on the pommel uh, whereas this one's got a little better handle shape in my opinion uh, so there's a reason that it was stepped up uh, this one's got a super high grind on it as you can tell right there but it's got plenty of beef left because of that 532nd steel as you can see right there absolutely gorgeous knife and of course as the name suggests edc2 it's great for an edc blade only three inches on the blade seven and a half inches overall but you get a full four fingered grip which is nice balance point is right there in between that single pin and the first mosaic pin which makes it feel super light and nimble in hand you always know where it is no matter how you're using it which is obviously perfect for an edc knife edc2 fiddleback forge Oh, you thought I was done with the vintage handle materials? Oh, no, 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 no. Emerald Cloud Vintage Micarta right there. Oh, with some really sweet lint right there on the blade. Let me get that off for you. There we go. Absolutely gorgeous handle material. It almost looks like, like emerald static. It's crazy good. Really love the lime pinstripes with the matching lime pins on that. Threw in a mosaic back here on the fifth pin. This stuff is like just absolutely gorgeous it's hard to even describe what it looks like hopefully the chatoyance and everything is coming through and you see a couple of the layers right there as it approaches where the liners are right there on top of the black liners of course taper tang oh by the way i keep getting so into these handle materials that i forget to tell you what model it is so this is the fiddleback forge warthog with a three and a quarter inch blade seven and three eighths inch overall eighth inch a2 steel that you can tell right there by the spalting with a beautiful swedge on there Absolutely super sexy knife, but a great size for EDC. If you're familiar with the Hiking Buddy uh, from Fiddleback Forge, it's going to feel very familiar. It's not the same handle, uh, but it's got a very similar profile and very similar size. So to my hands, uh, I carry a Hiking Buddy a lot. So this feels uber comfortable right out of the gate. Uh, but the blade shape is definitely sexier, in my opinion, than a Hiking Buddy. So great EDC. That is, of course, again, the Warthog Fiddleback Forge. All right, so this handle material is not vintage, but I'd say it's classic. There was a run a while back, a few years ago, uh, where you saw a lot of Fiddleback Forge knives come out with the oatmeal jute burlap. And this solo right here is kind of kicking it, semi-old school anyway, rocking that oatmeal jute. And it is gorgeous stuff. It's absolutely got a fantastic texture. Love the way the color pops on it. Looks really awesome. Natural liners. And don't adjust your screen. Those are not white liners. Those are Tiffany blue pinstripes, which looks absolutely amazing with that oatmeal jute and on that natural. Tapered tang, you can tell, is absolutely done beautifully. Nice thickness match back there on the pommel. And this solo right here, high grind on that. It's 8th inch A2, as you can tell, obviously, by the spalting right there on the Ricasso absolutely awesome if you want a really really great small edc knife uh, for fixed blade especially for pocket carry uh, this thing is absolutely great for that two and three quarter inch blade uh, so it's not super intimidating if you take it out in a public place to use it um, kind of cute almost but you do get a really nice handle three finger uh, shape on that or three finger size tuck your pinky really nicely in back behind it works really really nicely Feels really good in hand. This is the smaller uh, of the Bush Hermit family. So the Bush Hermit being the largest, the loner being the middle, and Solo right here being the smaller, which really goes to show you when you've got a great shape and a great handle shape, it works in a lot of different sizes and uh, kind of goes for a lot of different uses. But this right here is the Solo, really great small EDC that you're gonna enjoy carrying in a nice pocket sheath, maybe by Diomedes Industries over on fiddlebackoutpost.com. Go check that out, and uh, that's the solo. And last up for Fiddleback Friday is the Gnome. We haven't seen one of these in a little while, and we also haven't seen some really cool black and blue G10 in a while, which makes for a really cool striped liner kind of pattern as you look at the spine and the bottom right there. Absolutely cool design, cool little EDC knife, of course. This one's rocking commando, no liners, no pinstripes, because when you got that much action in the handle material, well, you don't really need to add any for texture because it's rocking it all day long. Got a taper tang on this and a super thick 530 seconds, which makes that taper tang really dramatic, really cool. Uh, nice little weighty 
knife to carry in your pocket but don't worry it's not too front heavy being 5 30 seconds and it's not heavy in hand either being a small knife with that tapered tang and also the tang is skeletonized as well underneath and uh, really lightweight to be a thicker steel like that so this one's going to be a super tough one for you two and a half inch on the blade and five and a half inch overall and this is the last fiddleback forge for this fiddleback friday the gnome that wraps up all the knives for the in-hand portion of this preview. And life is too short to carry an ugly knife. So we got a lot of different ways that you can remedy that particular affliction should you have it. Hey, appreciate you guys. Thanks for sticking around. Subscribe and all that stuff that everybody always says at the end of their YouTube videos. Hit the bell, subscribe, and hit us up on social media and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not gonna say smash that because everybody does that.